Why stay down, Mum? Here, come here. Now, Mrs. Shepherd was asking after you. I said you were starting at the Cultural Commission. There's no such place. Well, I just don't want the neighbours to know that you're working in a glorified sex shop. The eleventh level of the good old building is hardly Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, they could have sent you somewhere a bit more refined. Now, here's your cake. Do you want cordial? No, I'll get a drink at the canteen. Well, you may not get a chance. You may be locked in some dark room all day. Remember how thirsty you got during Star Wars? Now, you'll close your eyes at the dirty bits, promise. Mum, they don't let relief clerks classify movies. If you want to be a sense, you have to go to uni. You need a degree to watch smut. Maybe I could really impress them. I arrive on my first day wearing a raincoat. Good morning. I'm the new temp. <laughs> <laughs> Here's two mint slices to eat on the tram. Now, don't get them on your tie. Thanks, Mum. You think I'll ever get a permanent job? What is it? Mint slice. Mm. I can't go up there looking like this. Hang on. Where have they sent you this time? Film office. You? What's wrong? I've worked on a couple of their functions. They only like movies with subtitles or women who get drowned by pianos. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I'd better get up there. Make a good impression. Hey, cheer up. This job will look great on your resume. Really? Yeah, film office is mega trendy. Most of the staff go to Cairns every year. Gee, I've never been to Queensland. Here it comes! Have you Minister, how do you feel about the Prime Minister winning the steal? Did the Prime Minister consult with you, sir? They say the PM went over your head. I don't listen to gossip, gentlemen and ladies. The fact is, I'm pleased at this expansion of our rice markets, and I congratulate the Prime Minister on his diplomacy. I would like to remind you we are a team, a strong team, doing the best for our country. Thank you. No more questions. Devious bastard. I'm the one that does the trade deals. How many Japanese are there? 125 million, I think. And they eat rice. Three times a day, that's 10 billion tons a year. This deal will keep him in office forever. And help the economy, too. If the Japanese start buying our rice. How did he get to be Prime Minister? He's rude. He's arrogant. He doesn't even care about this country. One thing, sir, you do remember your promise. The new funding for my clinic. It's just that it hasn't... Why him? There's no justice. Excitement could worsen your prognosis. Think about something calming. The South Pacific Area Trade Talks. They last another fortnight. Yes, I believe that's when Spat ends. McHugh's in censorship, isn't he? He starts this morning at the film office. What sort of conditions are he in? He's responding well to treatment. Because if my funding were increased... Then he's ready for a little work. So I wouldn't risk his well-being... You can't have your rice cake and eat it too, Victor. It's time our Prime Minister learned that. Get me the Chief Censor, now. Father. Sorry to bother you, Monica. May we come in? Oh, yes, of course. I wasn't expecting company. Oh, there hasn't been an accident. No, everything's fine. Now, do you know our Mayor, Mrs Fielding? Oh, hello, Your Worship. I've seen you at the bingo. Oh, lovely. <laughs> and this is Father Nilsson from the Society of Jesus. A Jesuit. Oh, please, sit down. Dad, we've got visitors. Oh, I've um, put the kettle on. Do Jesuits drink tea? Uh, this isn't a social visit, Monica. We're here about an old friend of yours, Roy Mullane. Roy? This place just reeks of history. But McHugh is a temp. To allow him to classify films would make a mockery of my department. Well, that's just what they said when I had you appointed. Seems like only yesterday since I happened to visit that film set. What were you then, a, a grip? Best boy. Lighting. <laughs> from best boy to head of film office. Quite a leap, wasn't it? Yes, you've made your point, Minister. I seem to recall a special film project of yours, something called, um, Marge? Marg. A musical? Miniseries. Ah, yes. About the life of Margaret Whitlam. 
I don't recall it ever being made, do you? B. Arthur pulled out. But didn't you get a half million dollar grant of government money? McHugh can start at once, sir. It's been nice to catch up with you again, Catherine. So you knew Roy Millet? He was Mum and Dad's boarder well, a few years ago now. Is he in any trouble? No. Does your father remember him? Oh, he would if he remembered anything. Stroke victim. Oh, I'm sorry. But he did reside here. In Harvey's room. Are you sure he's not in trouble? And the last time you saw him was... When he moved out. Oh, Roy was always very good. He only missed one week of rent and then I'm sure he paid and Mum forgot. When he left, where did he go? Down Mafeking King Road to the Brothers. Of the Immaculate Conception? Yes. And you haven't seen him since? Well, he said he couldn't have visits or even get letters, so he kind of lost touch. He's dead, isn't he? I well, must have a mess, said. I hope he didn't suffer much. A little, I'm afraid. He was in a fire. I used to tell him not to smoke in bed. I didn't hear the fire brigade. Oh, it was a few years ago. His kerosene heater exploded. Oh. Roy took his vow of poverty seriously. Refused to have a radiator. How can I help? I'd like to find out a few things about him. What's your most vivid memory of Roy? When he taught me how to foxtrot at the CYO. How romantic. While he was living here, did he ever do anything strange? He walked out of Sound of Music. Mum and I were shocked. I see. And did you ever see him bleed from his hands? Once, when he was fixing the roof. I mean, spontaneously. What's going on? It's all right, Mrs McHugh. Now, don't be upset. Roy Mullane may have been more than an ordinary brother. Father Nilsson is on a fact-finding mission for the Vatican. The Vatican? Yes. I investigate people for possible sainthood. All assessments are to be filed chronologically. You know what chronologically means? I think so. Make sure the holes are evenly punched. Nothing looks worse than dangling paper. Lunch order's here. The deli likes to have them by noon or they don't get time to toast the focaccias. Lunch order's noon. I'm out to all callers unless it's the travel agent. Travel agent? For my overseas trips. I like to fit in as many film festivals as possible. Oh, this is my assistant, Ms. Maresh. This is Harvey, the new temp. Hi, call me Claire. Hi. <laughs> and from time to time, you'll be helping us classify. Movies? Films. What's so funny? His look of bemusement. Very Truffaut. <laughs> I can't classify films. <laughs> yes, you're right. Jean-Pierre Léo and Stolen Kisses. Um, you don't understand. Uh, I'm not trained. Yes, we're aware of that, McHugh, but it's a, um... A social experiment. This department has been accused of gender bias, and to show that we are representative, we're obtaining assessments from the ordinary person, man, in the street. But I'm not an intellectual. <laughs> oh, we're not looking for intelligence, just irrational gut-level responses, the sort of things that males are good at. OK, uh, I'll try. Ah, good. Let's not waste time, then. Today's films. Bullets in the wine. Oh, Stallone's remake of The Grapes of Wrath. Just give it an hour and go to lunch. There's yours, McHugh. Projection room's that way. Thanks. I've got the new Vim Vendors. Voss! Howard's rear end. This place has excellent potential. Roy's supporters are putting a case together, asking the Vatican to consider him. But it's a long road to beatification. <laughs> We're just looking after it for a friend. Oh, don't worry. I think the council will be rather keen to have you keep the animal. A sort of St Francis of Assisi aspect to the abode of St Roy. Now, let's not jump the gun. It's a long road to sainthood. We'll have to examine his life minutely. And, of course, we'll need proof of extraordinary events. Do you mean miracles? That's a sensational term. A local saint would be a godsend for North Mafeking. We certainly help the piety stall. <laughs> Of course, we must maintain the integrity of this house. The brothers knocked down his dormitory and put up a handball court, so this is Roy's last abode. It's a sacred site. A shrine? Perhaps. I got the job. Uh, this is Mr Bannerman. He's an old family friend. He's just come by 
to collect his washing. Uh, this is Father Healy, Father Nielsen and the Mayor. Very nice to meet you all. This has been an accident. An accident of destiny, Mr. Bannerman. We'll show ourselves out. We'll be in touch, of course. Yes, of course. Here are the categories into which films are classified. Frequent violence, one death, maiming or mutilation every 18 minutes or less. Nudity, sex with no clothes on. Adult concepts, sex with clothes on. Alcohol, food or tobacco abuse, gratuitous consumption of fatty, addictive or intoxicating substances depicted as a source of pleasure. And stereotype portrayals of racial minorities. That, for example. The black guy in the harness. Perpetuates the myth that Afro-American males are anatomically disproportionate. When in doubt, consult the guidelines. I tried not to, Father, but... Well, some of me enjoyed it. And you have to watch these films? It's part of my job. Should I quit? Uh, not yet. We know how important censorship is. If it's got to be done, it's best done by a Catholic. Then what do I do? If you're tempted to enjoy your work, and from time to time you will be, just remind yourself of the price we pay if we lose our self-control. What price is that, Father? Loss of God's trust. Loss of self-respect. Perhaps loss of life. Oh, you mean AIDS? The seminary, they used to say there are 43 forms of venereal disease. 43? Mm. Conservative estimate. And don't stand too close to those criminals. You never know what you might catch. I'll have to, Mon. That's what prison officers do. Look, love, if, if something unexpected happens, if, if one of those crims necks me, well, I wouldn't want to die with anything between us. Well, don't be so ridiculous. Now, here you are. Lettuce and Vegemite on brown. Why did you tell those priests that I was just, you know, a friend of the family? I have standards to live up to now. This house could be a sacred site one day. Yeah, but it's still laminex and mortar like any other place. We mustn't do things that a saint might not approve of. Oh, so Roy would have given the thumbs down to a bit of uh, kiss and cuddle, eh? I mean, what sort of a bloke was he? I've told you, Bernard, I barely knew him. Now there's a muesli bar in there as well, so watch your fillings. Come on, Mon. Gene is looking after Dad for half an hour. Hey, I heard about Roy. It's all over Mafeking. <laughs> Why can't they invent a smoke that's good for you? You didn't tell me you lived in our house. We had so many boarders, I can't remember them all. Besides, he didn't stay long. But you've actually known a saint. <laughs> He's not one yet. Where did he sleep? On the veranda. In your room. What, a saint slept in my room? Oh, you're just saying that so I'll keep it tidy. He owned your wardrobe. His name's on the back. Oh. Gee, it's probably a relic. <laughs> the priests will want to look over it, won't they? Well, they'll want to look over everything. I'd better wash the light fittings. I thought you'd be pleased. We'll have bishops, reporters, ladies' auxiliaries. One speck of dust and the whole world will know. It'll be like living in a zoo. And they'll ask about Bernard. You know how people assume things. Father Healy would say it was uh, up to your conscience. My conscience is clear. Just hate all this fuss. And I'm too old to move. Move? Well, they're calling our house a sacred site. Only a matter of time before the church takes it over. They can't do that. We've got nowhere else to go. 
tell that to the Vatican. Sometimes I wish Roy had boarded next door. The 43 forms of venereal disease. Um, genital warts, herpes, gonorrhea, condylomata acuminata, oriental sore, love. You little devil. It's just work, Frank. So many films to classify, I'm running behind. I wish I could do some of these things. It's the human waste disposal system. God didn't design it for such a purpose. You sure have. I envy you, Frank. You and Gina. Come on, Harve. You got the world at your feet. Single guy. Future ahead of you. Oh. Still wish I was in your shoes. Attractive wife. Beautiful kids. Nice home. <laughs> Can you believe the size of this guy? Oh, tonight, my darling. I will make up for every moment that we've been apart. There's something I have to tell you, Brock. Something you have a right to know. I've suspected all along. You have? Well, you're so much like a worldly woman that it's easy to forget that you're in... You're innocent at heart. Look, I know things have happened so quickly, my darling. You recovering from your amnesia, leaving the convent, getting engaged to me. But there's one thing I want you to know, that I would never, ever force myself upon you. But I want to be all yours, Brock. No. We'll wait till after the wedding. I'll sleep downstairs. Don't go, please, Brock. Look, I have to. What have I done? Oh, Brock. I only lie because I love you. I'll come back. Please. Come back. <laughs> Where's that extra blanket, Mon? Bottom of the cupboard. Be lonely out here. I'll miss you, darling. Will you miss me? Mm. What, what, what if I promise we won't do anything? Those priests will be back and they'll know. They're trained to smell that sort of thing. Well, it doesn't seem right. A woman like you sleeping on her own. It doesn't matter to Roy who warms your toes. Come on, put out the light, eh? No, Bernard. Go to bed. Oh, blessed Roy. You care more for him than you do for me. That's not true. I'm no saint, Monica. Neither am I, Bernard. He owned your wardrobe. His name's on the back. Harvey. Just remind yourself of the price we pay if we lose our self-control. Harvey. No. Go away. Do I need to see an eye doctor? No. Then why is it twitching like that? You've got pics, that's all. Pornography-induced career syndrome. I got VD from watching. Pics isn't a form of VD, son. It occurs when the brain is overstimulated. You're taking your work too seriously. Well, it's not easy to stay calm when you spend all day watching people trying for a family. Yes, I know. I do understand how you feel. Really? Too much flesh can be very off-putting. Ask any doctor. Now, let's take some blood. I took buckets last time. Do you want your electrolytes tested or not? It's supposed to be beautiful. Sex, I mean. But all they do is thrash about and call out each other's names. I mean, nice people don't do it like that, do they? No one is nice where sex is concerned. We're primates, McHugh. When the primates are roused, it's utterly savage. You, me, even your mum. Does that worry you? Oh, no, no. It's, it's just a surprise. And you don't care for surprises. That's why you're at home in the public service. There are no surprises here. Ow! I'm home. 
Hi, Grandad. Hi. The Saint Spotter's gone? Ages ago, got the place to ourselves. Kidneys for tea. Oh, great. I might lie down for a while. I have to watch this documentary on the life of Bob Hawke. It was longer than Howard's rear end. And the language. Don't push yourself, love. No choice, Mum. And they know it, too. Who's going to complain with half the country out of work? What's this? Oh, uh, I was just cleaning up. Roy Mullane? This was his. Oh, I found it. It's nothing. Have you shown it to the priests? Well, they wouldn't be interested in my old sheep music. I want to hear it. <laughs> oh, the table needs setting, and Fury hasn't had his walk. Well, take a minute. And you must use this in your sing-alongs. Tea stains and cigarette burns. Roy played beautifully. Have. Well, hang on a minute. Hey, Granddad, you remember this? This isn't Me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been a while since my last confession. I need to talk to you, Father. I don't know what to do. Coming is a very good start. What's up? I'm scared to tell you. It's all right, Monica. God works in strange ways sometimes. We have to accept the burdens he gives us. Whatever it is, you can tell me. I've heard so much in here. I'm unshockable. Well, you see, it... It's about Roy Mullane and me. Mail's in. Dump it and go. Always be nice to the mail boy, Catherine. You never know what he might bring. Minister, I... Two weeks in Venice, all expenses paid, and a government credit card, naturally. I don't understand, sir. One of our local documentaries will be entered in the Golden Gondola Film Festival. It might even win an or door. So I think we should be represented there. However, if you're busy... I could always make the time and catch up on my work in first class. Good. This new documentary is a particular favourite, so I thought I'd run a preview screening for the delegates at SPAT. Of course, it'll have to be classified at once. I'll do it myself. What's it called? Devouring Passions. Look, uh, I can see how busy you are. Why not give it to McHugh? The countries in SPAT are a sensitive lot. We have to be careful what we show them, Minister. Don't you trust your own staff? Yes, but... Or perhaps you're tired of working here. McHugh will classify the film. Oh, one more thing. We'll be travelling together. Good. Has your wife seen Venice before? My wife won't be coming. She'll be busy with the children. Ciao. Mrs McHugh. Oh, Your Worship, will please come in. I to deliver the good news myself. You've been given a heritage order. Of what? It's the council's recognition of the need to preserve this house. Now, there'll be signs going up front and back. Uh, but what if Roy's not made a saint? Oh, now, let's not be negative, Mrs McHugh. If we can get the Olympics, we can do anything. Now, have a look at this. It's our long-term plan for the site. But that looks like a cathedral. That's right. We retain the residence and build the church around it. But we were thinking of bringing the toilet inside. Oh, I don't know about that. Your National Trust now. <laughs> uh, we uh, had to rezone it non-smoking, of course. We can't run the risk of a fire in here. Not in the home of St Roy of Mafeking. <laughs> And I'll want your report by this afternoon. Big breasted babes on heat. What's wrong? Will the subtitles bother you? No, it's just the. Yes. Well, isn't there anything else besides sex? Oh, all right. Take mine. Devouring passions. 
It's a documentary on Asian cuisine. Does cuisine mean they cook it? What else would you do with food? You'd be surprised. Thanks. Farewell. Most becoming, sir. Yes, I'm hosting a film night at the South Pacific Area Trade Talks. And our Prime Minister will be there. You would have seen, Victor. was positively bloating with self-satisfaction. Anyone would think we'd never sold rice to the Japanese before. Ah, Mick, you must have reached the interesting part. I thought it wasn't pornographic. It's not. It's about Japanese cuisine. They have the most extraordinary tastes. They'll be eating our Australian rice with deep-fried dolphin, raw monkey brains, whales. That's on the film? Life's tough in the South Pacific, Victor. Passes the spanner, will you? This one? Yeah, thanks. Why aren't you fixing this at home? Gina says I get grease on the concrete. <laughs> Clean concrete's more important than our family car. She's tidy. Some women are like that, just more like the marry one. She'd rather scrub down the bathroom tiles than make up. Well, I don't think sex is so important. You should have married Gina. How's the new job? I hate it. Yeah, why? I'm sick of sex and Japanese food. You even sound like Gina. Well, maybe you'd be able to quit that place soon. Quit? Oh, we can make big dough from St. Roy, I reckon. There'll be tourists coming around. They'll want scones, mafkin water. We could open up a kiosk. Frank, he's not a saint. Uh, yet. It could take years. He's home and hosed. They want a saint for the new republic. He's a working-class guy, a man of the people. How can he miss? And something I don't understand. How come Mum's never mentioned him? They had lots of boarders. Not, I reckon. That Roy and Mum. <laughs> 